artist Jennifer Bartlett has become known as one of the most original image makers of her generation. She reproduces a very individual view of the world around her in an enormous variety of ways. Some of her pictures are exuberant, informal, full of color. Others she makes out of powerful abstract or geometric shapes. These shapes may be multiplied in one picture or she will integrate familiar forms into a strong graphic framework. Jennifer Bartlett works in New York and in Paris. Her interest in designing and laying out gardens has become an important adjunct to her work as a painter. She seemed just the kind of artist who might respond to the possibilities of the Quantel paint box, the computer that simulates palette and brush and allows the artist to create, adapt and store images. But she began the first of her two days on the computer suspicious of the technology. Indeed, for the first few hours, she rejected entirely its color palette and its technical repertoire and used it purely as a drawing tool. And even when later she began to exploit its technical effects, she disciplined herself by concentrating throughout the two days on one simple and familiar object. Basically, I just wanted to pick a very simple image to work with that was a concrete thing, which in, in this case was a glass of water, and to just keep doing it over and over to unearth for myself what the capabilities and possibilities of the machine are. I sort of instinctively decided not to use an image with which I was working or have worked, but to use something I had no intention of developing further that was something outside of the realm of wh what I would normally do. And I had remembered an artist who lives in England now, Michael Craig Martin, who had made a series of works, which I think the, the final work was a, a glass of water on a small shelf. It had something to do with it his um, understanding of Catholicism at a time. And I decided when you, you play a game where you say to someone, if you had a profession other than your own, what would you be? I decided that I would like to be a glass of water as an alternative possibility to my own existence. So just hit the old library there. Now we want to save, so press save again. We're going to save a picture. Save and then picture in the next, next column. This is very hard, we won't save so many. There we are, and all we have to do now is just press end, which is the top right, and the thing will think for a second or two. And that is now actually saved in the, in the store. I seem to circle around the machine instead of just diving in. I was more, actually more curious about what it could do for me rather than what I could do with it, um, to just see what it was. Have you ever tried how many layers you could build up? Oh, it's infinite. But I mean, you, 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 it's not like paint. You know, once something is black, that's it, it's black. You know, but you, you, with paint, obviously, you can get density and thickness and texture to it. But this, it's, once it's black, it's black. It's, it's just a, it's a layer one electron thick. You know, that's all, really. I think for each one of these drawings, I had a specific thing in mind, and I think on this one I'm probably trying out all the different widths, just because it's easier to, for me to see what they do. And I suppose one thing I was interested in is that you can see here I'm varying the pressure with which I'm, I'm bearing down on the sheet of plastic, and the, the uh, color reflects that pressure the way an ordinary brush or pencil would do, but in a totally different way.
it's kind of addictive like a game or, or something where you can just keep doodling and doodling over and over again like those slates one used to have that you'd rip up the paper and everything would disappear. So it has that sort of quality to it. Now this is enormous fun to do. There's no resistance either in this beat because there's no quality to it. It's really moving a like ballpoint pen across a plastic sheet and leaving no no trace. Where if I were using a pen on a soft paper, it might snag or get a big spot. If I were drawing with, say, charcoal the dust would be all over the paper. This stays nice and, and clean on the edges. And the other thing that's nice about playing around with this machine is you know that you can erase anything at any time. I think the thing that's different than any kind of computer thing, that that's absolutely obvious that you have a drawing capability on it, that the stylus itself or the surface you're, you're working on is pressure sensitive, so with more weight on it, you can get a whole variety of different kinds of, of marks that are sensitive to however anybody uses it. And I think that's probably the most exciting. Um, part of the machine is it has that capability. I would say that I was putting in something, but of course I'm erasing. I'm removing color from something. But I'd say I'm putting in some little um, air bubbles and uh, sparkles into the glass. I never went to work with the Quantel thinking I would make a drawing or a painting or a work of art. That was not that my intention. I realize now selecting an image which I hadn't previously used, which I didn't have any intention of using, um, again was a way of just exploring the machine. In this case, it's without purpose except just to see what it's, uh, it's playing which is very, very nice to do and very relaxing. And it's fun to see what the machine can do, and it's quite astonishing. I mean, to draw those nice circles 
would take me ages. And then I'd also have to decide what size they're going to be. With the machine, I can pull the square out and say, oh, that looks about right, and just kind of punch. With this, you could draw a line drawing. You could save it, that line drawing. So you always had the basic one. Then you could keep recalling that to try doing it, say, with a, with a cross-hatching with a fine pen. You could save that. Then you could recall the basic drawing again, and you could try something else. Say I just did the glass. Like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> let's just okay. Let's let's add some chalk. Okay. To the side. Oh, oh I see. It puts a grain in it. Yeah, it's more sort of textured line okay. than the pattern and paint. I was surprised actually. I thought you would have tried no, this before. No, I, I didn't know about this because I didn't go through oh. the machine logically. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, so it's a little bit of chalk, but I have two sizes. Well, you've got five, five different sizes. Yeah, of I'm going to do, I've done down two down. now. Oh, I see, right, yeah. Okay, here's a little air going around. Um, no, so we know what chalk is. Air brush you oh, don't so like. I hate it, but I'll do a little <laughs> bit of it just to see. I'll do that in red. You'll find actually with airbrush you'll have to paint a bit slower because otherwise it will leave a trail of dots if you paint too quickly. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then I want to change the color mm -hmm. to oh, Okay, so we've used wash, chalk, airbrush. Shade. Now, what will shade do? Shade will take the colours and make the, the colours darker. So if you, you paint over the picture, it's like turning down the brightness on your, on your monitor, but you do it selectively over part of the picture. Now, you, what you've got to do is check to see what colour you've got on your pen, because it'll look at the tonal value of the colour. For yeah. example, if you choose black, you'll be darkening the picture. If you oh, choose white, you'll, you'll lighten it up. And if I was doing it, I would be pinking it. Yeah. Um, no, no what, what, you, I would be, be lightening you'd it. You'd be lightening it, because the pink's actually quite bright. Okay. So maybe I will take... What about dark gray? Yeah. Dyed. Now. Oh, my goodness. So I mean, you're actually darkening that pink down a bit. And then you can vary it with pressure, too. Mm -hmm. It's quite a muddy pen, a muddy, a muddy medium. <laughs> And you can also do that with airbrush, so if you want a sort of a softer edge. Oh, maybe I won't do so much. Okay, so that is what? Now, what am I doing? Shade. Shade, black, and light. You can lighten it you or can dark. Lighten it as okay, well. let's do shade again, and I'll lighten it. That's right. Really, you want, you're trying to exploit most of these sort of functions that you can use. Uh-huh. That's what I'm doing for this little run through. Yeah. Now, we'll go to graphics. So, <coughs> I've done all these, I think. Well, maybe I'll do just, just go through them really fast. I, don't, I think you might be in pain at the moment. I am. Yeah. I'm in paint straight lines. <laughs> I just love to 
make a straight line. I do think that's a miracle to be able to, to just make a straight line. line. <coughs> uh, we'll do a rectangle. You know, have you done rectangles before? You've got uh, solid <coughs> and open, right? Yeah. So you're on, you're on and a, open. Yeah. And then I will do a solid. Okay. So I'm going to making a rectangle, a solid one. So then I'm in graphics, right, still? Yeah. One solid. What does grad mean? Graduated. You can blend two colors together. You have okay, to choose well, two colors. i have to try that, too. Uh, now, what am I doing? I'm making a rectangle, a solid one. So what you've got to do is drop um, just swipe up to the side and turn on graduated. Oh, no. No, why? What would I get? Because I was going to make um, some red rectangles first. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, it's a solid, my goodness. Mm. All right, well, that's all right. And we'll do a few circles. And we'll start with solid. And we'll start with a black circle. Oh, select black and get rid of the palette because you picked up white. Okay. All right, so that's circles and squares. Glimpses. Oh, well, this is all the ones first. And all right. Ellipses. Now, fill. What does that mean? Fill. Any any um, flat color. Oh, I'll save this first. Yeah. Before. Any. Any flat color on the screen, you can fill in another flat color or a different flat color, provided it's enclosed. But it's going to get slightly confused. Where there's sort of airbrush lines, um, it won't be able to see any flat color. So it will fill in where there is flat color, but it'd be sort of a raggedy edge. Oh, OK. Still not got it. There it is. And then down with the um, pen. You just press oh. in the area. You don't paint. You just press. You see what I mean about the airbrush lines? A slight airbrush yeah. line in there, so it doesn't it doesn't like that area. There's one there too. There's one there too. Are you going to flatten the color, the color out as well, or are you going to just leave it in lines? I don't know yet. Yeah. It's a fun thing, isn't it? <laughs> that doesn't look quite right, does it? No. Do you want me to try it for you? Sure. Because, I mean, there's definitely a neck. I mean, I can't guarantee I'm going to get it right the first time. But... Yeah. <clears throat> oh, quite, that's very good. Should we go with that? Mm-hmm. I think I'll... I think I'll just do it freehand from, yeah. from now on. Right. Maybe let's get this center one. Okay. You've really got to do it quite visually, and you've got to sort of say, oh, that's not bad, is it? That's oh, better yeah. than mine. <laughs> Now what will I do with it? Uh, so I'll go to painting, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll 
go. Right. I've been using photographs in my work for the last four years, and it's kind of like a, from my point of view, a nasty habit. I, it originally started out quite innocently where I wanted to record some specific information about a particular area that I was living in that I had to leave before I finished the number of drawings I wanted to do about it. And then I just became liking the specific quality of information that I could use in a studio situation. I was hoping that the machine would reveal something <laughs> to me that would make it absolutely clear that I had to give up using these uh, photographs as soon as possible. And I do think in looking at it that it has revealed this to me. <clears throat> I'm a great believer in rules sort of or arbitrary organizing principles against chaos. And also, if when you go into the studio, you have something very specific to do, and you aren't having to wait for inspiration, it's quite helpful. When you look at a painting, you know that it's one foot square, or it's six feet by seven feet, or it's a hundred by a hundred feet, and those would have d different kinds of impressions just by your sheer physicality. You won't know that, in a, say, in a photograph or on television unless you have something in relationship to it. So you have to see the painting with something else to define part of the properties or characteristics. interesting. But... The fact that I can change abstractly to something that looks like chalk, to something that looks like paint, to something that looks like pen, yet I don't feel any difference when I'm marking. It's always the same feeling of a ball bearing gliding over a surface that offers no resistance. If you work with a brush on canvas, it's different than working with watercolor on paper is different than working with pencil on a hard paper is different than working with pencil on a soft paper but it's completely different than the experience of drawing and painting it's like an idea of drawing and painting what we can do now is just wipe the picture to white so we can okay. see, see the line work do you want me to do that? I'll show you what I'm doing yeah. Um, I'll turn draw stencil off. There's the actual picture. Okay, and so there's, I, there's your line work. Yeah. So what I'll do is just wipe the picture to white. Okay, and put the stencil back on. Oh my God. 
Okay. The most interesting thing to me is to work two days on a series of drawings which do not exist. Now that interests me. But that's a little bit perverse, isn't it? But I do quite like that, that there, there were n never any real drawings, though they have the appearance of being real drawings. I wasn't interested in what I could take home with me. Uh, but I hoped I would see something that I didn't expect. And I probably did. I'm just not sure what it is at this point. Because this is very different than looking at, looking at a drawing. It's just not a drawing. It's much more transparent than a drawing would be. It occupies a different kind of space. The whole thing in the first place is constantly in motion that's perceptible because it's TV. I mean, any inch of the the screen that you look at, no image is ever stable. It's always wiggling around to one degree or another, which is the nature of this medium. And, and the way that drawing looks reflects it. Would never look the same on paper. Would never look the same in a photographic print. Never look the same really on a movie screen. And I like that watching that little animated X moving around. It, it never had any clear relationship to my hand. You know, sometimes I would just simply stop drawing and ex expect the little plus to keep moving because I was very interested. In, I think so possibly this machine could, could create an entire large group of schizophrenics <laughs> who didn't know where they ended in, in the material world.
I guess I'm so used to and bored with the way that I think. Do you know, I keep hoping for a kind of miracle that I will have somebody else's thought as if it were my own. I was hoping that the Quantel machine would sort of lure a previously undiscovered, dark, lurking corner of my mind into existence. However, it didn't. It was the same old way that I draw.